one of the other things we're thinking about in response to the economic climate is how we put the brand at the heart of everything that we do. And the way that we think about this internally at Match.com is what we call tapping into the emotional economy. So in, in the broadest sense, you know, um, personal recommendations and, and sort of non-variable, no, um, non-standard variables such as aesthetic, style um, and attitude are playing a, an increasingly important part in, in people's purchasing decisions. So. You know, the brand is central to absolutely everything that you do and therefore is the totality of how both your employees and how your customers think about you as an individual. So, you know, it's really important that you invest in that. It seems to make sense. Uh, you know, in a recession more than ever, um, the temptation is for brands to play safe, maybe dull down their creativity. Um, when, you know, at Match.com, and, and personally, I think it's absolutely the opposite thing that you need to do. So th there's four recommendations and points that, that, that I've sort of reflected on when thinking about this. So the first one is that, you know, in today's emotional economy, um, people increasingly will um, look to brands that understand them, that they like, listen to them, and ultimately can solve a problem for them. Um, so when we think about Match.com, um, we're trying to give people the, the widest range of tools that enables them to be successful in finding a potential partner and fall in love. So in response to the economic climate, we thought that we'll add uh, uh, an enhanced product uh, and, in, and in evolved a personality test that again gives people a greater self-awareness and hopefully enables them to make that choice. Um, the second thing is, you know, in an increasingly crowded marketplace where uh, any, the, the number, the data suggests that there's anywhere between 1,500 and 3,000 um, brand messages that you see on a daily basis, it's important that your, your brand stands out in some way and has its own personality. At, um, at Match.com, we have a phrase that says, you know, love is too important to be taken seriously. And, and that manifests itself in all of our advertising, that we try and have a sense of humour about how we communicate with people. And by definition, people can engage with our brand through the humour, it gives them an alibi to come and use our services. Um, the third thing, and this, this is something the IPA has come up with, that the, in a recession, brands that, well, in the last recession, brands that pulled back from investment um, and there's a six month block, um, can sometimes take up to three to five years to get back to that same momentum that they had. So this feels sort of counterintuitive as well, but you know, in a recessionary time, your p &L hopefully will withstand it, but it's a time to actually um, increase your investment and look at differentiating your brand even further. And I've talked about it before, you know, TV is 17% cheaper, CPMs are 20% cheaper. So it's actually an opportunity and the, the point of entry into buying media is, is lower than ever. So it's an opportunity to actually invest more rather than less, obviously on balance with the risk of your overall p and And then the final thing and sort of the overarching in comments is that, you know, more than ever, I mean, it's true at any point in time, but more than ever in tough economic climes, people are going to gravitate towards brands um, that they trust, believe in, like, and, you know, ultimately represent value. So you ne never lose sight of the value that your, your product and your services represent to people. People are all prepared to pay for quality and pay for value. Um, and, you know, you've got to try and avoid the temptation to, um, to, to discount and replace you know, the, 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 the value and revenue that you lose by volume. It's difficult, you know, once you start to discount and try to differentiate your product on price alone, it's incredibly hard to go in the other direction. This is about confidence in your products and services uh, and people will be prepared to pay for them if you add greater value. And that's, you know, my advice is always try and add more products, try and add more services. So it's really simple in summary is, you know, you've got to do more for your customers. I think um, work harder than your competitors and demonstrate um, that your product has value and have confidence um, that the value that you represent is, is the value that your customers want to pay for.